Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Annex Anonymous. I am Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. This video is not intended for children under 13. Well, hello again, everybody, and we're sitting here somewhere in what looks like will probably be Loreville. I'm starting off in 3.8.3, .3, I think it is, right? Or is it 2? Regardless, you know, it's just another patch and more stuff to do. Right, Carrick is out, there's some bug fixes, and we've got missions to run, and all sorts of fun things to do. But today I want to talk about a couple of comments that arose when I released my last video on the Carrick. And there was one specifically about, oh it's great they're releasing all these ships, but when are they going to release my ship? And in that situation, it happened to be the whole E. The first thing I want to bring to everybody's attention is something that you already know. Everything that we have so far inside of Star Citizen is just a different piece of foundation for what the game is going to be in the end. So in the beginning, when we got the original ships, which were reworked and reworked again, and then finally reworked a third time, we got the ships that were promised to us during the initial Kickstarter. Since those were released, each one of the vessels that we've been given helped to promote a different profession inside of the game, whether it be cargo running, mining, salvage, exploration, bounty hunting, or just being a mercenary fighter. All of these have been added to us, some of them because they were needed as building blocks for Squadron 42. So currently, when you look at the arrangement or the assortment of aircraft and, well, spacecraft and ground vehicles that we have, they really are just foundational pieces for where the game is going to be moving in the future. I know that sometimes we get a little bit anxious about having our ship in the game, and I can see something like a Hell C or a Hull E being needed in the game but only after they work out the logistics behind vessels that large. Now, I think the D and the E cannot land at any of the facilities that are currently inside of the game. And I think the whole C could only land in certain configurations. I think if the cargo is arranged on the left and right and above and not below. I don't know if that's changed, but what I do know is for those ships to actually be in the game, you need to have the vessels that are their support vessels, the hull A and the hull B, which will be the ones that will be unloading and offloading different cargo pods, we need those in the game. We also need a way for those cargo pods to either A, move themselves into position, or B, be manipulated by the hull A or hull B into position on the larger vessels. Currently, the very large ships that we have have internal bays for cargo running, and they don't have those problems. So when you're looking at answers to the question of why are they bringing out the Crusader ships first, the big answer is going to be because they don't need to have the mechanic of loading and offloading cargo in the game at this point. Those are all things that are probably going to be added as time goes on. So then somebody might bring up something else, like then why is the Reclaimer in the game? Well, the Reclaimer is in the game because it seems to be part of the storyline for Episode 1 of Squadron 42. And inside of the game, you don't have to have the same mechanics for onloading and offloading of cargo because that's not the purpose of the ship there. The purpose of the ship there is to be a set or prop inside of the Squadron 42 movie experience. So for some of the ships that we get that seem like they're a little bit before the actual mechanics are created, it's always going to be because they're probably needed somewhere else. But for me, there's certain ships that I'm always going to go to. And here it is. The Prospector. 
And the reason why I bring this one out is because we have two mining ships in the game now. We have the Prospector and we have the Mole. And that's because the very early, very, very early mining profession is now getting fleshed out. We still need refiners, we still need gas mining, we still need more in the game. But for now, the Mist Prospector and the Argo Mole allow us to help them build out what the mining profession is going to be. And to hopefully tweak it little by little, like they've done recently with being able to have different mining heads. Right now, we don't have a lot of money in the game. If we want to make some money, this is an easy way to go out and find your way into the world. And I think that's great. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is promises I've made to y'all. And, you know, I'd like to say I'm sorry, but I'm not going to because I think the only apology that you really mean is the one that you live by. So what I'm going to say is I've brought up many times in the last year that my videos were going to be regular and I was coming back to do them full speed. And then I didn't do it. And there's a lot of things that I fail to share with people because they're personal. And a lot of those personal things have to do... It has to... Well, let's just say it this way. I kept myself very active for four years by going to school and work, and it gave me a lot of things to do. So much to do that I really didn't have time to slow down and think about other things that were bothering me. For the last eight months, I've been out of school. I've just been working, and things started to hit me like a brick poop house. And I'm just going to say it this way. For those of you that feel overwhelmed, that feel like your life isn't going anywhere, yeah, that's depression, folks. And that's essentially what hit me. But what I'm trying to do now is to turn everything around in my production. Because... In the grand scheme of things, that's over. I am perfectly 100% right now. Don't have those worries I had for so long. And what I'm trying to do is trying to build my channel back up again. And I could only do it with your input. I could only do it with you interacting with me. So those conversations that I have with y'all inside of my chat, inside of my comments, on my Discord, are the ones that are going to keep me moving forward in my gameplay and in my video production and those are going to come very soon All right it looks like we might have an opening up there but i want to see if we do do we i asked for permission to take off let's see if we do have yes we're out good all right we're going to take this baby for a run and talk about some other things too so, in the grand scheme of things, I really do appreciate those of you that have stayed around. Thank you so much for continuing to support my channel and continuing to support me. And I promise, okay, I promise or I commit to you to bring you the best Star Citizen channel that I can make. Alright, so on the second or third subject of this is going to be something that I am seeing inside of not just my chat but a lot on the boards or on spectrum and a lot in my discord channel and that's people being totally upset about things that are coming on and off the roadmap so we already had a discussion about certain ships that are coming in the game and i'm going to just say it this way the whole discussion about the roadmap it goes exactly the same way as that you are not going to see things progress on the roadmap linearly ever. What's going to happen is that you're going to see things go on there, be worked on, get to a point where they're either going to get to the next step and be implemented and put into the patch or pulled off and put on the back burner because either A, something else more important came up or B, other elements for that particular item on the roadmap are not done. We're always going to be looking at the roadmap with these big eyes, praying to God that these items come out. 
in the long run, everything that's on the roadmap will be out because they have to be for Star Citizen to go forward. But how things come off that roadmap and get into a patch, sometimes we just have to be a little bit more accepting that things are going to be put on the back burner, other things are going to be moved forward. One of the biggest things I've seen about the roadmap in Star Citizen recently has been about ships and about lack of ships coming in the future. I just want everybody to look at 4.1 and figure where that's coming out. So 3.9 comes out end of March. End of June, 4.0 comes out. End of September, beginning of October, 4.0 comes out. But what happens on October 10th? That's correct, it's CitizenCon. And when CitizenCon comes out, there's always items that are released for CitizenCon that we don't know ahead of time. And many times, that's a ship. I think uh, right around CitizenCon this year, we saw the Mantis, and then we saw the Mole right after that. There were a lot of ships that came right after that. And of course, we saw the Carrick being played and then got a chance to play it a few months later. I think we're going to see a lot of things entering the roadmap as they start to tweak the roadmap over on Squadron 42. And that's the real big thing for 2020. 2020 is going to be all about Squadron 42. I know I've said this before, but they need to get that implemented because in the grand scheme of things, this game comes afterwards after our exploits inside of Squadron 42, we get to become a citizen and have our way around the universe, the galaxy, inside a star citizen. So the quicker that's done and gets out, the faster we can move a lot of those people that are working on it into the star citizen group and get our games made. All right, so we're gonna go out. Oh, we didn't even go anywhere. That was weird. All right, I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. And we're gonna to try to get to this moon yet again. Ariel, here I come. Ariel is one of my favorite moons to go to. I don't know why it's hot, it's disgusting outside. In the future, we're gonna to have to wear special suits to walk around it. It's just a nightmare, right? Here we go. Wait, where is it? See how it works. Oh, it's so gorgeous, isn't it? It is. All right, so we're going to get there. I'm going to do some mining, and then we're going to end this video. Last thing that I want to talk about. There was a concierge new newsletter sent out last week on Friday, and it featured what looked like either a... So it was a... It was an image, a screenshot, and it either featured a bridge of an upcoming starship or it was a work area with a lot of windows at Origin headquarters in New Austin on Terra. Now, at the bottom of it, it said ICC consultants are working with Origin, and it leads you to believe that there's going to be a new vessel. Whether that's a concept vessel, which is something I would, I, I would rather run with that, that it's a concept vessel, or it's a vessel that they've announced in the past that's going to be released, I don't know. The one that's, the only ones that are left from Origin are the 100 eyes, I believe, and I do not believe those are going to come until they start working on whatever the gas refining system is. Once that gets worked on, I think the 100s will come. So I had two things here. And I, I should insert video footage that I shot the other day of the 600i here. And I may. I'm going to fly around while we're doing this, though. And my hope is that it isn't going to be a all-out brand new ship. I was hoping, kind of hoping, that it would be a rework of the 600i specifically the exploration version. Now there's some people that talk about the luxury version not being so good. I find it perfectly fine. 
But what I do find is that the exploration version is missing a lot. And that crew quarters is just... It, it's, it's one of the laziest areas I've ever seen CIG create. When you look at something as beautiful as a Carrick or an 890 Jump, I'm a, I love the 890 Jump. I, I, I look at those as amazingly awesome wins for CIG. They're just tremendously, wonderfully created ships. The new Vanguard, awesome, great, wonderful ship. But the 600i has so much wasted space in it. I feel like it was just a lazy, lazily put together on the interior. And I was hoping to God that it would be some kind of rework of that. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm not sure if that's even something I want because I'm perfectly happy with my Carrick. And with my Carrick, I think I found a new place, a new home, a new home away from home, if you know what I mean. Well, those are my thoughts. That's the show for today, and I hope you like it. If you do, please click the thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe, please be sure to click the bell-shaped notification icon to be notified of all my future videos, because that's the only way YouTube will bring them to you. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.